You guys asked in my most recent YouTube poll that I cover Oath Under Snow. It was only like one or two people, but I decided to watch it anyways. I knew it was a movie a lot of people who watch Khalid kept telling me was actually very good, and nothing like Khalid. So that alone, with a couple of requests asking me to cover Oath Under Snow, had me really eager to watch this film. So I did! I watched all of Oath Under Snow, and honestly, it was really good! <laughs> Like, like, really, really good. So good, in fact, that I had no, it just had no right to be this good. That's how good it was. And if you don't know, Oath Under Snow is a prequel to season one of Fake Khalid. It takes place in a different timeline and focuses primarily on Shiro Imiya and Miyu. If you've seen all seasons of Fate Khalid previously, you will immediately know some major key elements, though to you the viewer, I will not spoil them for you. But a lot of the basic plot will spoil multiple seasons of Fate Khalid anyways. The studio to handle the production is good old Silverlink, who are of course known for Fate Khalid, but also such anime like Strike the Blood and Kokoro Connect. It's also directed by Shin Onuma, who you may know for directing Baka to Test and Kokoro Connect among other series, and as well is the lead director on every season of Fate Khalid. If you're wondering where this stands on Fate Canon, it is a spin-off within its own universe and requires no previous knowledge of any single Fate to watch or understand. Consider Fate Khalid its own thing. So now that we got the objective stuff out of the way, let's get to the real good stuff, the movie itself. Oath Under Snow is essentially one of the best Fate films that you can watch right now. Of course, Heaven's Feel is a way better film, but Oath Under Snow is right up behind them to round the Fate films out. To me at least, that's surprising. And I'm almost flabbergasted to even say that a product of Fate Khalid, a show about Fate characters becoming magical girls, and lots and lots of fan servers for said characters, which are most assuredly, may I add, not 18, could do something like that. And there is even a scene in this movie where we see Miyu's panties. Once again, she is like 12 at the maximum. Granted, this is the only time it ever happens. It's the only scene we see it, but not gonna lie, this brought the anime down a notch for me. You guys know how much I hate fan service for young girls and boys, as it's disgusting and archaic, to say the least. So it's no surprise to consistent viewers of my channel why I would hate such a thing. Anyways, besides that, the film is virtually perfect and even does some things better than Heaven's Feel, if you can believe that. It's that good. So let's get into such examples of why it's that good. And the first is that this film is basically a blend of Unlimited Blade Works and Heaven's Feel in the best way possible with a little bit of fake Khalid stuff thrown in. As for me, I didn't know a single thing going into this film, and I came out not caring, and even sort of wanting to watch Fake Khalid until I realized I, I, I just don't like Fake Khalid. But that's besides the point. If you're actually looking to watch something that is basically a love letter to Fate proper, this may be your best bet, as it feels like this is Fake Khalid for people who tried to like Fake Khalid, but for obvious reasons, couldn't do so properly. The biggest change is no Ilya. This film is essentially a whole film about Shiro Emiya, with Miyu as a side MC for good measure. While this film in many aspects is meant to show the backstory for Miyu and how she came to be in her little slice of the Fate universe, it's really a spotlight for Shiro, much like how Unlimited Blade Works was a spotlight for Shiro, and much like how Heaven's Feel makes Shiro's character one of the most complex and underrated characters in all, most of Fate, <laughs> Oath Under Snow does the exact same thing here. Some of my favorite scenes are of Shiro Emiya because his relationship with Miyu is actually rather endearing. Not only is Shiro and Miyu's relationship wholesome, and not anything more than that, but as a tandem, this film really works at its best when the two characters are on screen together. Examples of this are when Shiro is bringing books to Miyu so that she can learn and she is not able to leave the Emiya household due to powers. This shows one of the best traits about Shiro as a person. Essentially that he's basically a sweet guy who cares about everyone because of his gigantic massive heart. On a side note, I could see why Rin Tosaka likes Shiro so much as this film represents Shiro in that way better than most if any other fate story besides the visual novels and Heaven's Field to date. Unlike previously, recently the powers that be at the Helm of Fate have, have seriously nailed Shiro at almost every turn. I don't think I've liked this character as much as I do in recent memory with Heaven's Feel and Oath Under Snow. These two characters are great showcases of Shiro and great 
companion pieces for that character for sure. Another way this film focuses on Shiro is also flashbacks dealing with Kiritsugu, which are essentially some of the most toned setting scenes in this whole film. If you needed the film to tell you that you're dealing with a serious fate film, it's when Kiritsugu shows up looking like he's dying from cancer. Do not be mistaken, O Thunder Snow is a serious film with no jokes, and outside of a BS, uh, panty shot does not sway from its tone, and this is further evident in Miyu's backstory, which the film goes into great lengths to develop. Miyu essentially has the power to make any wish become a reality, no matter what that reality is. She even wishes in the film that she wants to become Shiro's true sister, and it happens. She's so close to Shiro that all she wants to do is become a special person and a sibling to Shiro. There is no catch to it where Miyu wants to smash him or wake him up in only an apron or one of those many stupid tropes that ruined Fate Khalid for me. This is some legit heartfelt, real stuff. And this is further backed up in the film when they meet Miyu for the first time. As I said, she has the power to make any wish a reality, but there is a catch. She can hear everyone's wishes, so she can't leave Shiro's house or any property that's safe for her to be. Years prior, she heard everyone's wishes when her power activated and destroyed a whole city, basically grounded it to dust. This obviously was because some sad souls wished for such a thing to happen. Not knowing what was happening made that a reality. I love this aspect about the Miyu character. She's a gentle soul herself that is the personification of innocence, yet created such a horrifying event that killed thousands of people. When you put it that way, it's no wonder why Miyu is the way she is. She's one of those girls that talks rather bluntly, coldly, and without much emotion. You know, the Rei Ayanami type. And much like Rei Ayanami, they get this aspect about Miyu right from the get-go. There is no BS attached to this either. They did this aspect virtually perfectly for Miyu's character because it's obviously not meant to fill a trope or role. They gave you a good reason and the viewer can deduce themselves that it would make sense that Miyu would act the way that she acts. I love it. And I like Miyu quite a bit in this film because of that reason. And as well, we gotta mention my girl, Thick Purple. One of my, that's, that was sounded, that was creepy. One of my favorite characters in the mainline Fate series, Sakura Mato makes a huge splash in this film because of a couple reasons. And no, get your mind out of the gutter. This is easily one of my favorite versions of Sakura Mato to date. It is my number two favorite, just behind the heavens feel, Sakura and just above Unlimited Blade Works. Her role in this film is spectacular. She's essentially the UBW version of Sakura, but way more forward and honest with Shiro, which creates a different twist on the character. She's still her timid and shy self, but not nearly as much while still retaining those hints of shyness. She's oddly enough, more of a blend with Tosaka and herself as she's essentially the main heroine of the film. I would even say there is a key scene within this film that is done better than in the second Heaven's Feel film. I, I won't tell you what that is, of course, but if you've seen it, you may already have an idea of what I'm talking about. And that's the thing, really. Oath Under Snow has a plethora of established characters to play with and mold a fantastic movie. It feels creative, unique, and new, while also essentially being a fan letter to UBW and Heaven's Feel. There was obviously a lot of care put into this film and where they want to go with, and, and that's also evident by the way the film looks in terms of design. I know it's not a unpopular opinion, but the fake Kali designs are less than desirable, and Shiro in the TV series looks exactly like what you don't want Shiro to ever look like. This dude, and every other fate is a handsome guy with a chiseled physique. He isn't whatever that was. And as you could tell from the main thumbnail, Shiro is looking more like himself in this anime. Gone is that terrible design from the TV version. Sakura as well has a fantastic design in this film and is also one of my favorite designs for Sakura. Once again, likely my number two right behind Heaven's Feel. She retains everything we love about Sakura while also still having a unique twist that makes it feel more like fake Khalid. Same for Kuritsugu, which was shocking to see in this film as he looked pretty spot on as well to what I think a fake Khalid Kuritsugu should look like. And getting into the animation for the fights, you best bet they're awesome. While not being anywhere near Heaven's Feel or even UBW, it's better than Fate Route and infinitely miles ahead of anything I've seen Fate Khalid pull off. And as Khalid viewers will know, there are some really impressive fights in Khalid, so that's an accomplishment. And really, for me to say that, 
it's really impressive. And with the final battle paying homage to Shiro versus Gilgamesh from Unlimited Blade Works, this fight in particular is what made me consider this film to be in the upper echelon of Fate films and just in general Fate spinoffs. And as well, this anime takes inspiration from Fate Zero. It does this by taking the flow of Fate Zero and how it deals with being a prequel and essentially goes ahead and copies it. This was for the better because with the prequel you have so much freedom. You can introduce characters and kill them off with ease, and it's better if that kind of thing happens. It pulls no punches in showing the deaths of your favorite characters, and by the end you feel like you've witnessed something truly spectacular and dramatic. I'm constantly surprised by this film because it's the best of every Fate mainline anime, and as well Fate Khalid. Like I said earlier, the film is a love letter to all of the best things about Fate, and because of that, you're probably gonna have to go out and see this film if you enjoy Fate. Don't worry either, you don't need to see a lick of Khalid to understand this film. Just sit back and enjoy it for what it is, and allow yourself to be amazed at what this film has to offer. I cannot get across enough how much I did not expect this film to be this good. I went with the lowest of low expectations, and the only kind of disappointment I had was that Oath Under Snow didn't somehow create its own series. Fake Elite is fine if you like it, but it, it ain't my speed. I would have loved for Fate Khalid to take the Oath Under Snow approach from the very beginning and shut the critics up a little bit. Imagine a dark magical girl show with a presentation like this with animation and designs like this. While it wouldn't be able to touch it, it would give Monica Magica a good companion to be compared to. One of the best magical girl shows ever. But sadly, we got what we got, and I'm honestly okay with that because Oath Under Snow is a virtually perfect film to me. It has flaws. Do not get me wrong, but in terms of a viewing experience, it is one of the most entertaining fate films you can watch right now. So get out there and watch it, I promise you won't regret what you see. So, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Put down in the comments what your thoughts are on Oath Under Snow, and know that I have a Patreon where on the $1 tier and above, you can get access to everything. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching the video. Bye bye